Today we're going to learn how to build a basic cake smash set, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Daniel with the SmashCake.com. I am the photographer around these parts. And if you've never heard of the SmashCake.com, uh, well, it is an online resource for all things SmashCake. We have business tips, we have photography tips, we also have places for you to buy props that may be hard to find, and it all exists over on the SmashCake.com. Now today we're going to go ahead and learn how to do a very basic set. Uh, this is what I like to call Smash Cake 101. It does not get any easier than what we're going to learn today, and anybody, whether you're just starting out or you're a pro, can do this. Now this is, in fact, going to be the foundation of your Smash Cake business. And if you don't have a Smash Cake business yet, well, get on it, because there is plenty of money in Smash Cake photography, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. So if you are not in Smash Cake Photographer yet, if it is not a major part of your revenue stream, head on over to thesmashcake.com, again, with another shameless plug. But if you head over to thesmashcake.com, there's a blueprint from how I went from zero to creating quite a lot of uh, income every year just off of Smash Cake Photography alone. And my blueprint is all over there, and uh, you can just follow along with me, and before you know it, you will have a Smash Cake revenue generating machine. So today, let's get started with <clears throat> excuse me, the basic set. The basic set, if you go looking on Pinterest, if you go looking around on the internet, you're going to find that the basic set is, it usually starts with seamless paper. It is a one color seamless paper that has been doctored up with banners and all sorts of props and a cute little outfit and the cake. When you get all these components together, it is a timeless, classic, beautiful uh, smash cake uh, set and the pictures you produce from that set are amazing and again they're timeless so if you take them today and the the child hangs on to them for 40 years it's gonna look relatively current um, when you look at overblown sets if you look at sets that are trendy or current or or now like for example Harry Potter now I love a Harry Potter set but eventually that's gonna become dated and it's gonna become kind of a joke so if you focus on these basic sets where you just highlight colors, then you're really what you're getting is a timeless and classic look after it's all said and done. And that's why a lot of my parents, uh, when they come in and they see our examples of our over-the-top sets that I love to build, um, oftentimes parents will gravitate to the more simple, uh, color-based, seamless uh, style background shoots. And that's what we're going to learn here today. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the very basics. I want you guys to pop on over to thesmashcake.com and I want you to check out our pro shop. And there you will find rolls of seamless paper um, from our friends at Savage, a uh, seamless paper company. They are amazing and they produce just about every color under the rainbow. So no matter what color the parents of the child you'll be photographing uh, are into, I can pretty much guarantee you that Savage will have that. And all of those are Amazon links two reasons. Number one, you'll be helping us out because those are affiliate links and we get a little bit of pocket change every time you buy one, but that's not the reason we did it. The reason we did it is because it's easy. Now, if you've ever tried to ship a 107 inch roll of paper, they're like nine feet long, okay? I drive a Nissan Cube, it's not gonna fit in my car. So what I do is I order them all off of Amazon. And that's what the smashcake.com actually started out as being little history of our site. It was just a list, uh, a PDF list with links so that I could tell my assistants or anybody where to get the paper and I wouldn't have to order it myself. And then somebody got the bright idea of saying, hey, that needs to be a website and a resource for other Smash Cake photographers. And Bob's your uncle. Here we are. So all of those links are Amazon links. Uh, those of you with Prime, you'll get that roll of paper in two days and you won't be burdened with having to ship it. So, so there it is. So Pop on over to the smashcake.com, pick out your favorite color, okay? Um, and what I recommend you guys, all of those links are 107 inch rolls, okay? Now you might be thinking, that's super huge to be photographing a baby on. You don't need 107 inches. Well, you do. <laughs> and there's a couple of reasons for it. And uh, we can get into it in future blogs, uh, the reason why you need to overbuild your sets. But basically what it comes down to is if you're going to use a five-foot roll of paper, that baby's going to have to be really super close 
to the background in order for the baby to not fall off the edges when you back up to take the picture. And anytime you have to stretch backgrounds, anytime you have to dive into Photoshop and fix errors that you could have fixed on set, you're losing money and you're, because you're losing time. So what I always recommend is you get the 107 inch roll. Now, today we brought in a model, we brought in a little baby, and we are using a uh, fashion gray, 107 inch long roll of paper of fashion gray. Now that fashion gray, I could use that for headshots. I could use that for seniors, families, it doesn't matter. And I've done it. Um, I've used that for all of those things. I've even used it for boudoir. Now, so you, you're going to get multiple uses and it's going to be money well spent. So just get the bigger roll of paper, then you can shoot families on it. And then also you're not limited to how many different camera angles you can shoot. When you have a baby on a five foot background and you're super close to the background, not only is the background going to be super in focus because you're that close to it, um, but it is going to limit the camera angles that you can take the images from, and that in turn limits the amount of sellable images you have. And if you expect to sell wall collages, uh, wall of canvas collages, or albums, and you're only getting three or four shots, or five or six, you're not going to sell an album. You're not going to sell a wall collage, and that's going to lower your sales average. So that is the long-winded reason why I always go with a 107-inch roll of paper, which is what we have linked on the smashcake.com. So bounce on over there, pick out your favorite color, and let's get started. Now, the first thing that we're going to have to do when we get that roll of paper in the, in the mail, when the FedEx guy drops it off, you're going to have to pull it out of the tube and you're going to have to suspend it with something. So obviously you're going to need a backdrop stand. Um, I have mine wall mounted because I have a studio and it's a commercial space and I don't really care if there are holes in the walls because that's what I do. I'm a photographer. I need a, back, a wall mounted backdrop stand. Now the benefit to wall mounting, of course, is it's safe. It's super safe. I don't like the idea of having too many light stands on a set because a child can grab a hold of those light stands and knock it over, and that just petrifies me. But if you don't have a, a space where you feel like putting holes in your drywall, you can get a backdrop stand. And what I recommend you do if you're going to go that route is I want you to sandbag the crap out of it, okay? Absolutely sandbag the crap out of this thing. Um, their sandbags are cheap. You can get like three for $15 on Amazon. I think they're linked on the Smash Cake as well, so you can go into our pro shop and find sandbags. Now here's the pro tip with the sandbags. Do not, under any circumstances, fill them with sand, okay? You, will do not, you do not want to let off a sand bomb in your studio because that sand is going to leak out of those bags. It's going to find its way everywhere and eventually into the sensor of your camera, on your lenses. It's just a hot mess. So never bring sand into your studio. That's my, that's my pro tip. So if you're going to use a backdrop stand and you're going to sandbag the crud out of it, don't use sand. Use pea gravel. Use water bottles. Use anything you can to stuff in there and grab extra, you know, to, that has extra weight. My recommendation is pea gravel because if it does come out, if it does empty out onto the floor, it's just a simple matter of picking up the pebbles and throwing it right back in the bag and zipping it right back up and everybody's happy. So do not release a sand bomb in your studio. No sand. <laughs> So, um, so that, yeah, we have ours wall mounted. Uh, mine's, my wall mounted backdrop stand is 10 feet off the ground. And what I like to do is I like to take that roll of seamless paper and I like to run it to the floor and then stretch it out about 10 feet away from the backdrop stand. Now I know that seems like a long distance and, and, and it is, I'm overbuilding my sets, but again, it's all about having the ability to shoot from 180 degrees and still get the baby on the background without having to do any Photoshop work later. So that's pulling that out allows me to get the baby farther away from the background, allows me to focus on the baby and have the background go buttery, you know, so the baby will be six to 10 feet, six, yeah, six to 10 feet away from that background. And when you focus on the baby, the background is going to go butter, buttery, blurry. It's going to be amazing. That also saves you time in Photoshop because, I mean, let's face it, you can make the background blurry in Photoshop and spend hours in layers hell trying to make it right, or you can just get it right in camera. And trust me, when you're in business and you're doing multiple shoots a week, you're going to find that you're not selling pictures, you're selling your time. And anytime you are away from your camera pushing that button, your business is losing money. 
So stay in front of that camera, stay out of Photoshop as much as you can by getting it all right in camera. And that starts with pulling your backdrop paper 10 feet away from the actual stand. Trust me on that. Now, of course, I want to point out if you're using a roll of seamless paper, this is kind of a no-brainer, but I've seen it happen. I've seen it on Pinterest. Don't roll it out over carpet, <laughs> linoleum, laminate flooring, um, anything that's solid doesn't have too many grooves in it. Tile floors, nah, stay away from those. But you want a solid floor, a solid foundation under your paper because if you set a baby on it and you're on carpet, it's going to divot, it's going to wrinkle, it's going to look like crud. So, solid floor under your seamless, seamless, pulled out 10 feet away from the backdrop stand. And that's pretty much what you do with your seamless. Now let's talk about the banner, okay? The banner is super, super important. Um, this banner that I'm about to, well, the banner that we use, we custom create every, a new banner for every client. And we do it because it involves the parents. During a consultation where we talk about what kind of look that they're trying to get, um, we always discuss what colors you want to use and what kind of things the child is into. And mom and dad will, of course, land on some colors or some sort of theme. And at that point, we go down to Hobby Lobby and we go to the fabric department and we find fabric that pretty much fits that theme, fits the color requirements that the parents suggested. And then we cut them into triangles and we fabric glue them onto um, just a standard um, ribbon and then stretch that ribbon across. Now, we, we usually build for 12 feet because you want to have a nice dip. You know, um, so that's, that's kind of what we do. And I think it's a, a quarter of a yard per color. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to get into how you build this just yet because we have a tutorial on the smashcake.com with how you build the banners. So let's not get too deep into that. But let's go back to when you involve the parents, it elevates their experience. They know that you've done something custom for them, for their child, and it just kind of lifts you up as a professional in their eyes. And we have attributed part of our high, higher sales average just simply by making these seven to $12 banners. So uh, the extra benefit to that also is if you buy the pre-made banners that they offer at Hobby Lobby, that's kind of a printed on a glossy stock and the camera will, uh, you know, that gloss will reflect light back into the camera and it just looks awful. So do yourself a favor and just spend the time. I think it takes 10 or 15 minutes to make these little banners and it, just just do it. It'll, it'll elevate your, It'll make your customer experience that much better. Your clients will feel like they got a, a much more custom, you know, <laughs> custom experience. And in the end, in the sales room, it's going to benefit, benefit you by, you know, higher sales average. So make these banners. And if you want to go ahead and figure out how to make them, um, I mean, you can pretty much look at it and see how we did it. But if you really need a step-by-step -step tutorial, bounce on over to the smashkick.com and we have one there for you. So that's pretty much the banner. Let's talk about props. Props are the next big thing that you're going to need. And we like to use balloons and we like to use tissue paper pom-poms. Now we did a blog on uh, five really awesome props that are cheap that, that, that go in almost all of our sets. And again, it's on the smashcake.com. Check it out. Um, but I really, when I'm doing these basic sets, I like pom-poms, I like balloons, and that's about it. I don't like to go too far with it because the idea behind one of these basic sets is to just keep it simple. Now, the cool part about doing the pom-poms is they're like three for a buck at the dollar store, okay? It's not a whole lot of money, but you get a large pop of color in the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy some of those three for a dollar pom-poms at the dollar store if you can get them. If not, go to Hobby Lobby. They're like 250 for three, something insanely cheap and get, I would recommend about 20 of them, different colors. So depending on what colors you're using, I like to use two to three colors and just pick up pom-poms in each one of those colors and then you can kind of fill the set with it. Now the goal to using the pom-poms, the reason we like to use them is that when you roll out your paper and you pull it out, there's gonna be a divot right there at the base and that divot is gonna have a shadow. No matter how well you light it, there's gonna be a shadow. So of course you're gonna use your props, your pom-poms and your balloons to hide that line behind the baby. So go ahead and just push them right up against the back of the, of the, uh, of the paper. Just push them right to the paper and it's gonna hide that shadow. It's gonna just uh, look cohesive and seamless and you won't have that gray little divot, little, I don't even know, like half pipe 
looking shadow back there. So um, you're going to go ahead and put some all the way to the back and you're going to fill that line. You're also going to put some a little bit farther away and then a little bit farther away as well. And if you really want to knock it out of the park, get some extra ones, put them in the foreground and shoot past them to the child so that you have foreground, midground, and then all of your background elements. And that is really going to make your images look a heck of a lot more dynamic. And when you're shooting on a basic set, like the one we're creating right now, you need those extra little layers to kind of elevate it. I keep using that word, but that's exactly what you're trying to do. You're trying to elevate it. And it gives you more options. You can take some with pom-poms in the foreground, some without, and those are unique, those are unique photos that you can sell to mom and dad. And trust me, mom and dad go through and go, well, there's one with a pom-pom, I want that one. There's one with her wearing sunglasses, and I want that one. And the more options you can give them, the more money you're going to make in the long run. So that's pom-poms. Now balloons, I want you to do the same thing with the balloons. I want you to have clusters. I like to use clusters of five balloons in like two, maybe two colors. And I like to put them in the background. And then I like to put a second set sometimes in the foreground, depending on how busy I want the set. But for this one, we're just going to go ahead and use balloons, uh, a group of five on either side to kind of flank the child. So on either side of the set. And what that does is it kind of creates a, a vignette, really because you have elements all around the child and you're leaving roughly a little hole in the middle and that's where you put the baby and it kind of frames the child so that's that's why we do it that way. Now how high do you want your balloons? I would say uh, you never want the balloons you never want the balloons too high because they won't be in the frame so three feet two and a half three feet you're gonna have to just play with it and of course gaffer's tape is what you use to stick to the paper and there you go so now you've got balloons where you want them you've got pom-poms where you want them and you've got your pennant or your banner so the next thing you're going to need for a very basic set is a outfit that is color coordinated to the background now again head over to smashcake.com we have a ton of, of outfits um, that we've posted on there we actually work with a children's clothing uh, um, company called Bonnie Jean and they have given us the, the links and they give us some outfits to test with and we play with them all the time so we love Bonnie Jean but we also love what we can find on Amazon because the price is right and we get it in two days so jump on over to the smashcake.com there we have a bunch of outfits that uh, including the one we're featuring today we have a bunch of outfits there for you to, to choose from and if you don't find what you like then just keep cruising on Amazon until you do so uh, yeah so we chose a uh, looks like little blue pants with a blue and white checkered shirt and some suspenders very basic very clean very classic now you need a cake stand now cake stands are something that are absolutely important that don't really seem like, seem important. When you get an ugly cake stand or a cake stand that doesn't match the set, it ruins the whole shoot. It just derails the whole look. So today we've chosen a wooden whitewashed uh, cake stand, which really fits the, the look of the outfit, the look of the set. And I bought mine at Hobby Lobby, and we have the links on the smashcake.com that will send you guys over to Hobby Lobby where you can buy the exact cake stand that we use today or look for something else that's completely up to you and your personal taste. Now here's a, a little tip um, on the whitewashed cake stand that we're featuring today. We went ahead and bought two because every now and again you get twins and what brings it down is when you can't, like if you buy a cake stand oftentimes if you go back six months later that cake stand is not available anymore. You can't find it on Amazon, Hobby Lobby doesn't have it, Target doesn't have it, you can't find it. So with the basic ones, like this whitewashed cake stand that we're using today, I always urge you guys to buy two because every now and again, well, I say every now and again, six times a year we get hit with twins. <laughs> and it's nice to have a neutral color, uh, two neutral color cake stands. The next thing that you are going to need is, of course, a cake. Now, I work with a with a, a bakery, a couple of different bakeries actually, but every now and again, um, a bakery will let me down. Here's what I do. I run down to Albertsons, I run down to Aldi's, I run down to whatever your local store is, uh, even Walmart, really, and they're going to have ready-made, pre-packaged, $5, 8-inch cakes, one layer, 8-inch cakes with like white frosting and, and sprinkles. Yeah, and so you pick up two of those, and it's going to cost you 10 bucks, and you put them in the fridge. 
And the day of the shoot, you just scrape off all the junk you don't want, you sandwich them together, and then you jump onto Amazon, you buy some sprinkles, or you go to the grocery store, and you buy yourself sprinkles in a couple of colors that match the set. And all you have to do is put them in a bowl, mix them all together, grab handfuls of it, and, and you've got your stacked cakes that you've scraped off all the flowers and roses. Now just take handfuls of sprinkles and just smash them on there. And it's, you'd be amazed at how well that works. It, it seems a little ham-fisted, but I'll tell you what. I have these blanks at my studio, and when mom and dad bring me a cake that is just, you know, like maybe aunt, their aunt or uncle or grandma baked this cake, and they show up, and you can see it on their face. They're, they're almost apologetic when they open the box. An ugly cake will ruin your sales average. So I always have these blanks, and I always have sprinkles in the right colors ready to go. And a couple of times, mom and dad have walked in with the ugliest cake I've ever seen, and I just do this cake trick. I smash the sprinkles on there, and now I've saved the shoot, and I'm a hero. And anytime you're a hero uh, or a professional in the eyes of the customer, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay off later in the sales room. So worst case scenario, you spend 10 to $15 on cakes and sprinkles. You have a backup. And uh, worst case scenario, if you don't need it, you have cake for dessert. So there's my <laughs> little cake tip there mixed in with this lesson. All right, so we have the cake in the background and the props. Uh, and now we just need a cake topper. Now, Amazon is crawling with different kinds of take cake toppers, and they run anywhere between $5 and 20 bucks, depending on whether or not you get some with lights or if they're motorized or whatever. Great place to get your cake toppers. It's where I get all of mine. I just I don't shop for them local, um, mainly because I could spend all day bouncing from Joann's to Hobby Lobby to a bunch of, uh, you know, all these craft stores looking for the perfect cake topper. But what I should be doing is editing. I should be shooting. I should be calling clients. I have a business to run, so I can't chase down cake toppers all day. So Amazon Prime is your friend on the cake toppers. So now we've got all the components. We've got all the components to a set. We've got props, outfit, banner, roll of paper, cake stand, cake, and a baby. Now the question is, how do you light it? And this is where we kind of stray from the basic 101 concept. I use artificial light. I use uh, Godox, uh, Godox mono lights. Now, you can light these using light from a screen, you know, from a sliding glass door, some really large windows. Those work great. Just simply throw a sheet over those. It'll diffuse the light and um, you can get it done. But here's the thing. If you're relying on sunlight, then you have to understand that you may have a stray day where there's no light. You may plan your shoot for Wednesday and you wake up Wednesday and it is gray and rainy and nasty and you have no light. And now you are kind of hosed. Pardon the phrase. <laughs> so, um, and that's what happens to us because we are located in the Pacific Northwest and eight months out of the year, we get gray, drizzly, rainy, nasty. There is no sunlight and we didn't have an option. Also, every now and again, you get parents that actually have jobs <laughs> and they can't make it before five or six in the evening. And in the wintertime here in the Northwest or really anywhere in the wintertime, after five o'clock, five, six o'clock, you don't have any sunlight left. So get yourself used to the idea that you're going to start thinking about artificial lighting or off camera flash. Now, I use the Godox 8600. I absolutely love these lights. I wrote a blog about these lights on thesmashcake.com. Check it out. But the reason I love these lights is they can, I can use them with large modifiers and create large, huge spreads of light, which means that the shadowing is not much of an issue. So for those of you who are afraid of off-camera flash because you, know, you get these wonky, stray shadows, don't worry about it. You're going to put a modifier, and you're going to basically create a giant wall of light just like you would do if you were using a sliding glass door to, to light the subject. So definitely check out the Godox uh, lighting system. It is high speed sync. I know I don't want to get into the science of it, but uh, high speed sync means you can set your shutter speed wherever you want. And when you have a rambunctious kid that is just bouncing around your set, just raise that shutter speed and um, your, your strobes will keep right up with you. No annoying little black bar at the bottom from being out of sync with the flash. None of that crud. Um, it basically just works. You know, you can set it and forget it. So check out the lights. That's pretty much what we used. Um, and if you're, so let's talk about where I put the light. 
because, I mean, I used them. So um, I like to put the light roughly, if you are the camera and I am the baby, yeah, you are the camera, I am the baby. We're going to put the light roughly over here, uh, about 45 degrees, and then up here, about 45 degrees. Now, it's really hard to tell, you know, from this video where, you know, roughly where, you, where, the, where I'm telling you the light should be. So here's, here's my secret sauce, and this was taught to me years and years and years ago. To get the light roughly where it needs to be, you need to picture that your subject is a wonky unicorn. Stay with me. Wonky unicorn. So instead of having that horn right here, you're going to want you're going to want that horn sticking right out there. Now, if you follow that horn, it's going to point to where the light needs to go. All right? And you know, as the child moves, obviously the light would have to move with it. And you can't do that. So you use a giant modifier and you're getting this huge swath of light, which means you have this huge area for the child to to move around in and you won't have to worry about shadowing. So, wonky unicorn, all right? Just remember that. And if, you know, you want the light on the other side, then wonky unicorn on this side. Now, I've seen it done where people have taken construction helmets and hot glued a wooden dowel on the helmet, roughly, and then they can just put it on their subject. I wouldn't recommend doing that with your client over your shoulder because uh, talk about making you look a little uh, amateur. And it's just, it's goofy. Nobody wants to see that helmet on their child. So don't go that route, okay? I <laughs> don't recommend it. Just envision a wonky unicorn and you'll be just fine. So there it is. That is our basic everyday um, set. Real quick, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about business. I know before you leave, before you close this video, I want you to understand that you are in business, okay? Now, I went ahead and did the numbers on this very basic set, and I have an absolute, I have a total cost, including helium and all sorts of things. Um, but So the reason I bring it up is because I get into these Facebook groups with you guys, and I see what you're charging for session fees, and it's well below the cost of basic sets. And some of you guys are charging like a $25 session fee and you're spending hours and, you know, hundreds of dollars building these elaborate sets with, you know, little camper trailers and all sorts of really amazing outlandish stuff, which it's, I, I'm in awe of what I see you guys building. But at the same time, if you're only charging $25 for a set that costs you $200 or $100 to build, you're losing money. You're, you're, relying on the fact that your customers are going to buy prints and it's going to offset the cost. Well, from time to time, and we do a lot of cake smash sessions at our studio, but um, from time to time, people will come in for the session and we'll never see them again. They just won't come back for the reveal. They're just in the wind. And that does happen three or four times a year. Um, and, and, you know, if you are spending $100 but only charging $25 on the session fee, you've lost $75. You just paid somebody else to, you know, you took money out of your own pocket. And we can't do that. Um, as, as artists, we want to. We want to give. We want these parents to have these pictures. And I completely understand that. But at the same time, you have to remember that you have your own family that you have to take care of financially. And you just simply can't do that. So if I was charging $25 for a session fee for today's, um, for today's set build, I, uh, you know, let's see, it, the total came to $105 and three cents. And that's because I factored in helium. That's what the three cents is. $105. And if I charge $25, then you could see where you do that two or three times a year. And financially that's going to hurt. So please remember that, yes, you want these people to have the pictures. You want to give them that for their, you know, you want them to have those heirlooms for the rest of their lives. And that's why we're in the business, but you can't do it at the expense of yourself. So that's my little soapbox about business. And I do want you guys to start thinking about business. If you haven't already, I want you to put just as much time into your business education as you do your photography education. Okay. That was a mistake that I didn't make. And I'll tell you what, I almost went out of business several times because of it. So for every couple of hours you spend learning photography, spend a couple hours learning business and you will be just fine. So once again, I'm Daniel with the smashcake.com. I want to thank you guys for watching. I definitely want you guys to pop on over to the smash cake. Um, look at our pro shop. 
That's where you're going to find all of the seamless, all of the outfits, and all of the props that we used for today. So if you wanted to copy this set completely, please, you have my permission, and just dive right in there. Each one of those is an uh, Amazon affiliate link, so by buying your uh, seamless paper, which you're going to buy anyway, but doing it through the smashcake.com, you actually help us, and you're not paying any extra to do it. So uh, we certainly would appreciate it. Now, if you want more tips like today's tip, um, then head on over to the smashcake.com. There we have blogs about business, blogs about lighting, blogs about cake design, blogs about everything. So definitely give it a look, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. And uh, until next time, guys, thanks for, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.